<laughs> it's pretty crazy. When you get a call from a customer in Lincoln, Nebraska, and they tell you that they want BA carts to build them their dream golf cart, well, you tear a club car onward down to the frame and rebuild it into this unit right here. So I got a call from a customer in Lincoln, Nebraska, and he owns a trucking business, transportation business, and has some pretty cool semi-trucks with custom paint and all that. And he said he wants a special edition, custom, fully loaded club car onward so he could use at his lake place down in the Ozarks in Missouri. So we took a brand new club car onward and tore it down to the bare frame. And like you're seeing right now in the video, we ran a bunch of wires for all the accessories on this cart. But that's about enough about how we built it. I wanna show you all the items that are done now. So let's talk about all the awesome features that this special edition metallic blue club car onward. You can hear this golf cart way before you can see it. So let's talk about the audio first. All right, so there is a lot of audio. What is powering all this system is a 700 watt JL Audio amp and that's installed inside the dash. And what you see here is the club car overhead console. We install a Stinger Heighten touchscreen. It's a 10 inch touchscreen. It's one of the coolest things I think we do here at BA Carts. And what's awesome about this is not only does it have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, HDMI has an HDMI port. You have my phone connected right now via Bluetooth so I can control all my audio. This does have a microphone in it too, which I actually learned this from a customer. So it has two options for mics. So if you get a call, this right here is the mic and it sounds clear as day actually. I've gotten a call from a customer that had some questions and he was connected to the Stinger and he was talking to me and I said, what are you talking me through? It actually sounds pretty clean. And he said, I'm talking to the screen. And I was like, oh, okay. And another awesome thing that I love is if you throw it in reverse, bam, you got a backup camera. That's some pretty cool stuff that I love about the Stinger heightened screen. Obviously you see no wires because we run everything down the struts. And then what's really nice about it too, because when you have a powerful amp like the JL M705 that's powering everything in this golf cart, you need a good head unit to tell that amp what to do, what power to throw at what speakers and all that. And with crossovers and EQs and all that jazz. And what's nice about the Stinger is, you know, it's got a 15 band EQ and it's got a bunch of settings. So right here, I mean, we've gone through the whole EQ right here, adjusting everything. And with the crossover settings, we've done the crossover on here, we've done the crossover on the amp. It's just really nice when someone's spending this kind of money on a sound system in a golf cart, we like to make it sound A+. plus. Then you have Hertz HMX six and a half inch speakers, some of the best marine grade sounding speakers in the game. You're starting to see these a lot more boats nowadays because people are starting to realize that Hertz, even though they're, they're a pretty old business, they've only been in the marine industry for a while and they make some phenomenal speakers. And then between the seats, eight inch HMX speakers. And as you're seeing, all these have LEDs in them too, which we'll get into, but it's kind of hard to see, I'm sure. Storm, if you want to bring up, maybe bring the camera right here. And I got put my face, put my face right here by the thing. So these are HMX H eight inch speakers. Really help this sound system have great highs, great mid, mid bass and great low bass. Cause this has a BA stealth sub, which we'll get into, but with being eight inch speakers in our waterproof enclosure, so it's fully enclosed, the mid bass that these speakers produce is pretty crazy. So, and especially when you're firing up at the roof and it's coming down on all the passengers, and then you got these firing down and ricocheting up, there's a lot of, there's, there's a really big sound. And then the best option we provide for sound systems is our BA Stealth Sub. So what this is, is a JL Audio 10CW3 thin line sub, and we build our own enclosure and it drops right inside the cooler hole. So yes, you gotta sacrifice lack of beer storage for a base, but this is the best sounding golf cart sub in the industry by far. Never heard anything that's even close to half as powerful and hits as low as this does. So, cause this box is designed and built to the exact specs that JL Audio themselves gave us for their sub. Yeah, and it sounds amazing. Obviously you don't see a sub here cause it's firing at the golf cart cause that's the best way to do it. Cause now it has a loading plate. It's building pressure and it's firing against the cart which helps it produce a heck of a lot better bass. I didn't, I wasn't making a joke that you could hear it before you can see it, cause you really can. If we crank this to volume 40, this, this parking lot is 400 feet long and you could easily hear it across the parking lot because of these, these are technically boat speakers to be able to play, be played at super, super high volumes to overhear the boat's engine and water and all that stuff. So when you just throw into a quiet golf cart, they really scream 
and most people that if you're not deaf like we are you don't even turn it to three quarters of the volume because it's too loud for most people but that is it for the audio honestly i could talk about the audio in this whole video but you can't really hear the audio through a video unless you were in person so let's talk about something you can see in the video and that's the led lights So this Onward is rocking our XK Glow dual zone LED sound system. Now I know you can't see me probably, but the golf cart's more important. We got these crazy flashing lights, which is all for looks right now. I don't want it to be this crazy while I'm talking. So let me, there we go, a little better. So why is it dual zone? So you can see the underglows are on right now. We also have the speaker roof and rear speakers all on as well. And why it's a dual zone is because I can control those speakers and roof separately from the underglows meaning with the xk glow app i turn right here and now i can make if i want my speakers to be red and i want the underglows to be yellow i can adjust all that right there in the app if we want something more chill let's say we want it to be set to blue i can set this as the default right here in the app and now it's all set to blue and now that i set it as the default i can turn it all on and off and it's going to be blue every single time. And then another cool feature is we install the controller here inside of the dash on the driver's side. So I can tap the controller and I can change the colors there as well. So you don't have to get the app out every single time you want to adjust the colors and stuff. A couple things we do a little differently than other people do with LED lights is there's a lot of carts out there that look, they look great in videos and pictures on the internet, but are the lights actually uh, dependable or the lights actually installed well. Meaning you see a lot of places they put lights around along the roof. Well, unless you're completely restructuring how the roof is made with new aluminum channels and all this stuff to hide the LED lights and to make them mounted without relying on the 3M tape, the stuff doesn't stick. Yes, it looks really cool having 360 lights around the whole roof. It might look awesome in pictures and videos and it might look cool for an hour, but that stuff does not stay up there unless it's actually being bolted to the frame of the roof and the only way to do it right is to rebuild the entire frame structure of the roof to hide the LEDs, because the whole point of LED lights is not to see them, is to see the glow of them. So that's one thing we do differently, and what we do is we do a rock light. So if you come over here and look, that's mounted well, it's screwed in, it's not gonna come off, it's not, you can't pull it off like you could, lights around the whole roof. So you can see the whole roof is changing colors as I've changed colors of that. Another note I'd like to make that's very important to me is the underglows. So you're seeing right now, everything's glowing. The point of underglow lights is to see the glow or to see the ground effects. The point is not to see the light itself. Way too many people and builders out there, they put the lights right where you can see them. They tape them or they, th they zip tie them to the frame where you, if you just step back a little bit and you're 20, 30 feet from it, you can see the lights clear as day, which just looks tacky. If you come all the way back here, Storm, all the way back here to this door and start looking at it, you're not gonna see the lights still. Cause we mount them way, I mean, you can drop the camera down to the ground. You're still not gonna see them because we install them as high as possible under the front end, under the, right behind the rockers. It's called indirect lighting, ground effects, underglow. It's supposed to be, see the glow of it, not the actual light itself. So that is another thing we do that I think makes a big difference. The other lighting this car has, which this doesn't matter if it's indirect or not, because the point of this lighting is to freaking light the night up like it's the sun or the moon, I should say. I guess it's the moon. But what's nice about this next lighting is the dome lights. So it lights this car up like it's daytime. And what's nice about this is actually a lot. People, this is one of the favorite things we do on, these, on the golf carts we build is these dome lights. Because not only, yes, as you can see, I'm lighting everything up in this cart. And people use their golf carts a lot at night. And they're dropping their phones, their wallets, and the chances of me just finding my phone or something right here, a lighter or something that's in the crack right here, right now, as opposed to finding it now. Both of these features are powered by rocker switches right here in the dash. They're both labeled. So we got party lights and we got dome lights, both labeled. Part of the light lights up when you turn the light on, but even if the light's off, the it's tied to the ignition. So you see exactly where they're at. So once you turn that key on, you see those switches, so you can turn both options on. You see all this audio, you see all these LED lights and all that jazz. How do we make all this happen? And how does it stay dependable and actually work for our customers? Well, it's all about the wiring. So you've seen the LED lights, you've seen all the audio, but what really makes all that happen? 
And this is where we talk about a little bit about wiring. As you've seen in my B-roll, the time lapse of us building this cart, we spend like 90% of the freaking build doing wiring. And that's literally where all this, how this all happens. One thing I really like to make clear, especially when we have customers walking in our doors, is it all, all this stuff might look cool, but will it actually work? Does it actually work? And how long will it work for? Because doing proper wiring, there's no way to, there's no cutting corners. One thing is the dome lights. The dome lights, you don't see any wires because I spend five hours running 22 to wiring all through this channel. Next, you see all this audio up here. Well, we make our own harness for the Stinger Heighten screen. They told us we couldn't run the wire seven, eight feet from there all the way down there because they didn't even make a wire. Well, we make our own wires. So that's all ran through the struts as well. So they're not exposed the elements. Then we also run the LEDs, the RGB LEDs, the dome lights and the speakers all through this strut as well. So you're not seeing any wiring there. The brain and the amp is all right here, which you're gonna see in, the, in my time-lapse video. But here's what really makes a difference in my opinion. So what you see here is a Stinger high-powered car audio battery. Uh, this is like a $500 battery. It's made to handle crazy amp draw and handle that for a long time, meaning with the 700 watt sound system, this will toast a stock battery in two months if you're using it a lot. We have a Marine 50 amp breaker that we installed on here. And what that breaker is powering is just the amp. That is essentially the fuse for the amp. And then right here is just a Marine fuse panel. And what that is powering is the dome lights, the LED lights, and the head unit. Yes, it's cool building a really flashy, cool looking golf cart that sounds great, that has LED lights everywhere and ooze and nausea, but we are more concerned with how long it'll work for and how well it's wired. How every little detail, every little wire is perfect, is soldered, is heat shrank, is taped, is split loomed. All that stuff matters a lot. Especially when you're getting a call from a customer in Nebraska who's gonna be using this in Missouri, which is a 12 hour, 12 hour drive. But that's enough about the wiring. I'm sorry if I bored you to death, but I just, we get more and more calls every year about people building high-end carts that have all kinds of crazy features and stuff but the lights or the sound system or whatever works for one month and then it stops working. And it's all because it comes down to wiring. We work on quite a few golf carts a year that aren't built by us and it's always a wiring issue. I'll stop boring you to death about all that. Uh, it's just very important to me that you know that this thing was wired to the nine. Nines is it, or the T's? To the T's? To the T's. I'm good at wiring, I'm not good at grammar. Um, so I build golf carts. But I'll stop boring you about all that. Let's talk about this onwards looks. So as you can probably see that this is far from stock looking and that is because it's got a lot of powder coat and a lot of custom paint. Jeff, he, his trucking business, he has Peter built semi trucks and they have a really cool blue. And what we did is we found the closest color to that to match it and we painted the whole golf cart in that. As you can see the body right here and the tail, this is painted in that metallic blue but in gloss. And then everything else is painted in satin, which I love. I think the satin is, I don't know how our painter does it, but it has like a metallic look even though it's satin. It's really crazy, but the fender flares, the strut covers, the kick panel, the switch panel, the rear fender flares, even one thing we do that uh, a lot of people ask us about is we actually paint the whole tub. So when we tear this thing down to the bare frame, which I'll show you right now in the video, we take the entire tub out and paint it to match. That way you don't have a black blob right here or it just looks like crap while everything else is custom painted. So we do that, well, that's all painted. This is graphite texture powder coat. So it's super, super durable. That's not totally scratch resist resistant, but it can handle quite the beating. And Jeff told me he might be driving this a little bit off road and stuff like that around Ozark. So I wanted to do, a, I wanted to do a gray that could take some abuse. So the brush guard, the rear, the, the front and the rear struts, and then the Jake's Nerf bar steps, and as well as the back seat grab bar, the support and the steps, all graphite texture. And what's also nice about it being texture is for these steps right here and for the Jake steps, it's got a little, if they're wet, they're textured, so they have a little more grip to them than just being a super shiny, glossy powder coat. So last but not least about the cosmetics before we get into the interior is the rims. So these are mods, bomber rims, chrome, 14 inch. They look amazing. Jeff, as soon as I set them to him, he was like, yes, that's what I want. And then of course we did the X-Comp tires. That's enough for the exterior cosmetics. Let's talk about the interior. <laughs> I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> so these 
are Lazy Life premium cushion covers. What they do is they go right over top Club Cars premium covers and they are very comfortable and they are cool touch, cool touch vinyl. So they're comfortable and cool, just like my mattress. That's why I was sleeping on them. And then we have the hex design and we also have blue stitching in here, which might be kind of hard to see in the video, but it does have blue stitching on all of this to match the rest of the golf cart. Jeff was concerned about the seats not getting, not getting too hot. So, well, we did cool touch and we did gray and white. So, I mean, it's the best option you could probably possibly ask for. Next, this is the first time we've ever painted a dash cover. And I just felt like this would really help tie everything in and it definitely did. This dash cover took it all apart and had it fully repainted. And what you're seeing here down here is you've got two rocker switches. One is for the party lights. So that's the lights that are all going on, the speakers and all that. And then you have our dome lights, which we've talked about too. So you got all that. And then right here is your ports. These are your USB ports. One is just a standard USB to, to charge your phone, to plug a USB stick in. The other USB port is a to plug your phone in for the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Of course, we don't do many high-end builds anymore without it. Extreme mats. And yes, they're in the front. They're also back here. And then last but not least, we've got the Forever Sharp steering wheel. I, as soon as Jeff said, let's do this golf cart, I was like, what freaking better option to add like that semi-truck look than a brushed aluminum steering wheel, carbon fiber, and then also has the finger holes if you want to show it from the backside storm, which I have some B-roll of it. But we got the chrome hub adapter and we got the chrome finger spots as well. I thought this would just really help tie the golf cart together. It's pretty crazy that I get to do this for a living here and all the guys I have here at BA Carts, uh, my team here at BA Carts. Us building golf carts for a living is a pretty special thing. We definitely don't take it for granted, especially for, you know, I appreciate all my customers, but when you just have somebody call you all the way from Nebraska and say, I, I want this, this, and this, and I trust you guys to build it and build me a dream golf cart for my family and I, it's just really special. And that, when I finish a cart like this, it definitely makes me sit there and think for a second, like, man, what a great lucky job to have. Yeah, just wanted to kind of say that in my video, just say how grateful we are for what we do, for our customers that, you know, order carts like this. I can't wait for Jeff to see this in person. This is gonna be loaded up in a trailer here in the next couple days and be shipped off to him. So I'm really excited for him to see it. But if you like this video, please hit subscribe to see more. If you're still watching, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or thoughts about this golf cart, please shoot them down in the comments below. I'd love to see them. But with that, thanks for watching. Have yourself a good day.